Hello, my friends. I am thrilled to be with you today. I have what is one of the best study Bibles in the world, the ESV Study Bible by Crossway, and it is in cowhide deep brown leather. What I'm going to do in this video, if you will bear with me for just a few moments, I'm going to compare this Bible, which is one of the best study Bibles in the world, to what I also believe is another one of the best study Bibles in the world. And I'm talking about, of course, the Reformation Study Bible, which is also an ESV, but the notes are slightly different. So hang with me. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the main sections of the Bible, the very beginning, we're going to take a look at a couple of book introductions, New Testament, how they handle that, and then also a couple of book introductions in the New Testament. We're going to look at the introduction to the concordance, the maps, and a couple of notes here or there. And we'll let you decide which study Bible you think is the best. And also at certain points, instead of me reading the notes for a specific section of commentary just pause the video hopefully it, it'll be you know high enough quality you'll be able to read it and you can read it for yourself that'll save me and you some time you can just pause the video read the notes and then hit play when you're done reading them okay so first the box for the esv study bible like i said this one is in cowhide deep brown genuine leather Pause the video to read the back of that. And then we're on to the spine of this beautiful, beautiful leather. There is no paste down liner here, which I kind of, I actually kind of like it this way. I can feel the leather here. It's a different feel than it is on the outside. But that's up to your personal preference. Now I will show you the first thing in the ESV study Bible. Is presented to marriages, births and adoptions, deaths. You're not going to find that in the Reformation. Now, both of these have amazing contributors for the study notes. The commentary on both of these study Bibles is going to be worthy of your time no matter what doctrinal background you're from i will start off by letting you know that if you don't already know both of these study bibles have a fairly reformed protestant view on scripture and most of the theologians and scholars who worked on the notes will have a high view of God. A lot of mentions of the sovereignty of God. And you'll be seeing a lot of that in both of these Bibles. But I think you'll be seeing it a little bit more in the Reformation Study Bible. And my particular one is in Montana cowhide leather. I'll also show you the box for this. comes with a little slip. And also, I love this box. It's very deep, it's very nice, and has a velvety cloth overboard feel to it. And again, this is for the Montana cowhide. This has a paste down liner. Again, to your personal preference. Both have a very nice, smooth exterior. The ESV study Bible in genuine deep brown cowhide has a slightly smoother exterior but they are both genuine cowhide uh, i personally prefer the reformation study bible it is a thicker sturdier piece of leather and if you've seen my other view comparing this one to the condensed version which is just genuine leather i point that out that this is a very very thick piece of leather and i'd like that but again to your personal preference which ESV study Bible and which Reformation study Bible you decide to get. Now, presented to section, but no deaths, marriages, births, that sort of a thing. 
how important that is to you, you can decide. And again, to save us both some time, if you if you want to read these, you go ahead and pause it as you feel led. Very similar introductions to the Bible. Now, the font size for the Reformation Study Bible, which you're seeing now, is 11 for the scripture and nine and a half for the commentary. So, 11, nine and a half for the commentary. Now, let's switch back to the ESV Study Bible. Now, in a moment ago, I just showed you we stopped at the Old Testament. I'm going to pick back up there. Remember, it had the Pentateuch from the Reformation. Theology of the Old Testament. This is a really good article. And then here's the introduction to the Pentateuch. Now, I will say that you've probably already noticed it seems like the text is slightly bolder or thicker, if you will, in the ESV study Bible, but it is not quite as large. It's slightly smaller text than the Reformation study Bible. The other thing you'll notice in the ESV study Bible as opposed to the Reformation, is color maps. There are maps in the Reformation, but they are not color. How important that is to you, you can decide. Now, the reason, part of the reason I'm comparing these two directly is because they are very similar price points, uh, these particular editions anyway, the Genuine Cowhide, Genuine Cowhide. Um, the Reformation is slightly more expensive, and I will show you why. Hang with me, and you will see why it is that the Reformation, if you look at like ChristianBook.com, you'll see that it is a little bit more expensive. Now, I'm going to go stick with the ESV here. The Old Testament uh, books, Scripture, Commentary, Cross-References, and occasionally a color map. Same thing in the Reformation Study Bible. Now, the notes... Very similar. Have I read every single note? I have not. There are 1.45 million words of commentary and topical articles in the ESV Study Bible. And there's a similar amount, slightly less, 1.1 million in the Reformation Study Bible. In addition to approximately 790,000 words for the scripture and a few of the cross-references. Uh, because they're both English Standard Version translations of the Bible, so they have the same there. Um, very, very, very dense in the amount of notes uh, compared to something like the MacArthur Study Bible. I have a video of that coming up where I compare all three. And the amount of commentary and resources that you have in both the ESV Study Bible and the Reformation Study Bible uh, far outweighs that of something like the MacArthur or uh, even some of the other study Bibles that are out uh, on the market. These are entire volumes of commentary packed in with the Scripture. Now we're at the 
time between the testaments, the intertestamental period. Here's what I like about the ESV study Bible. Timelines. Chronology. Uh, I have a chronological study Bible, which I enjoy very much in my personal study. I wouldn't take it to church, because uh, if the pastor calls on you to read a scripture and you got your chronological Bible, you just might be thrown off and you don't want that to happen. Everybody's been raised on the traditional order of the 66 books. But the canon of scripture um, is not the way that you've been raised. It's not always been that way. It was written in slightly different orders. As you know, Paul's letter to the church in Rome was not written directly after the events of Acts. All right, so now we're going to look at a couple of more articles. Again, Theology of the New Testament, excellent article, along with the, the Theology of the Old Testament. And again, there's, you know, timelines. I love the timelines. Graphs, um, things, and then things like this here. Look, I huge, huge, huge bonus for me personally when you're studying uh, New Testament timeline. Because it helps a lot. Uh, it, it helps a lot with apologetics. Uh, when you're dealing with witnessing to people, establishing the, the history of Scripture and how it was written, who it was written by, because a lot of people who don't affirm the inerrancy uh, and church in antiquity, they don't affirm it because they don't believe that it's factual. And when you are trying to, first of all, when, when you're trying to witness to somebody, you need to prove to them that the Bible is the Word of God. Okay? And I'm going to try and see if this helps. That might help a little bit. Now, in order for you to believe anything that's in this book, you have to believe that this is the Word of God. Now we're going to switch to the intertestamental for the Reformation. So having those timelines is a great tool for witnessing to other people, non-believers especially. Also, very quickly, four ribbons in the Reformation Study Bible. Very nice, very nice ribbons. I know some of the Bible Rebound people, custom Bible people, uh, get very serious about their ribbons. There are two ribbons, two ribbons in the ESV Study Bible, four in the Reformation. All right, now we're at the same. We're going, this is the Reformation Study Bible, intertestamental period. Now, I will say that, see, now here's the maps, not, not in color, but... The information is in the maps, is what you're really looking for, not that they're in color. It's a minor difference. And as you can see, there was probably eight or nine additional pages of information in the intertestamental period for the ESV study Bible, as opposed to the Reformation, which we just went through. Now, I'm going to show you an actual book introduction. This is the book of Acts. Book of Acts, introduction. This is the Reformation Study Bible. This is one of the slightly more detailed introduction books for the Reformation Study Bible. Okay, now remember that, and look at that in your mind. I'm going to go to the one in the ESV here. All right, this is the ESV, Study Bible, Book of Acts Introduction. As a side note, see, look at I love this. Timeline, color map, themes. Now, there are themes in the Reformation Study Bible. 
So, as you can see here on this one, uh, the ESV Study Bible has slightly less information overall in the book introduction than the Reformation Study Bible did. So, it's kind of, you know, apples and oranges. It's a little bit different here or there. They both kind of equal out. This is just as you're reading through the book of Acts, commentary, cross-references, color map. That's my cat. Everybody loves cats. If you don't love a cat, you're not saved. You need to repent. <laughs> I know that there's I know there's a lot of people who love dogs. Dogs are great. See the cat, he reads scripture. My cat is saved. I preach to him. See? There you go right there. Nice. He wants to hear the word of the Lord. You can tell my house is sanctified. Y'all can comment amen in the comment section. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you while I have the ESV study Bible here. Now, the rest of it is, you know, Revelation. Okay. Now, we get into the end of Revelation. Here comes the articles and resources. I want you to pay close attention to this part. This is what helps make the difference. And this will be part of the reason why the Reformation is slightly more expensive than the ESV study Bible. Now, there's a lot of great, great articles in here. A lot of theological depth. People like Wayne Grudem, J.I. Packer, John Piper, just to name a few who have contributed to this. I'm not saying that they wrote this specifically. Um, and it's not, it doesn't tell you who wrote it specifically, but it doesn't really matter. The information is solid. Uh, you could cite it on, uh, you know, I'm a biblical studies, working on my bachelor's, university student. You have to cite solid information. And what you need is something like this. These things can be referenced in your papers. They can be referenced in your witnessing to people. Family members, it doesn't really matter. It's all solid information. Now, biblical doctrine and overview, things like that. Now, this is like a slight, um, you'll, you'll see here in a second. On the Reformation Study Bible, there's the how the canon of Scripture was made. Um, Implications of Chalcedonian Christology. Some of that is in here. Uh, a little bit of overview of how the canon of Scripture was made. And then there's just uh, deity of the Holy Spirit, how this Holy Spirit works. You know, Christology on the other page. Um, so a little Christology, pneumatology. Um, basically a little systematic overview. And again, you know, if, if you want to pause it and read this. Material, hopefully you can. And trust me, you're gonna you're gonna if this is boring you, don't worry. This is good stuff. And you're gonna want to remember what this looks like, because I'm gonna compare it to the Reformation in just a second. Biblical doctrine and overview. Okay, that's the end of that. Now we're on to biblical ethics and overview. Also, I've read most of this. Very helpful, especially when you are going into the ministry, if you're in leadership in your church. This is a great, great article to read. Um, I don't even know if you'd call it an article. There's so much to it. You could call it a, a small book, because I've seen books at the Christian bookstore that have less information than this. And that's another thing people ask me, how do you justify purchasing something that is, to some people, expensive, to others, pocket change? It doesn't really matter. The price of it is what's important, whether you can afford it or not. I tell them that the information contained in here is worth more than its weight in gold, worth more than its weight in platinum, as far as that's concerned. Um... Here's something that people ask, have been asking for a lot of time, especially if you have any relationship with a uh, holiness or strict uh, religious upbringing or association, interracial marriage, uh, always a topic that comes up 
again, especially when you're uh, witnessing to people, there's been a lot of uh, negativity, a lot of people, you know, who have condemned it. There's your scripture summarized right there. Instead of you searching and searching and searching and Googling, there's the article right there for you. Now, interpreting the Bible. That's what this is all about. The Reformers. Augustine. The Enlightenment. The Alphclerum. All right? That's, what, that's, how, that's how we're here today. We're here because of the Protestant Reformation. We're here because somebody like Martin Luther stood up and said, The just shall live by faith, not by works, not by sacraments, rites, rituals, and passages. But we are saved by sola scriptura, by the scripture alone, by reading the Bible. The plowman, with his mule, should be able to read the Bible and be just as learned as the Pope himself. So that's where both of these Bibles come from. They, both of these Bibles come from a perspective of you, the Christian, being powerful enough in your own walk, in faith, in Jesus Christ, to be able to give an account to others, mainly to yourself, of why it is you believe what you believe. Not because of something somebody said, but because of the power and authority of the Scripture itself. Now, here's something else that a lot of the church has missed. Uh, the Apocrypha. A lot of people have asked me about it. I've asked about it myself. Um, there's a great, 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 great article here about the Apocrypha and the importance of the information in it. Is the Apocrypha on par with Scripture? Absolutely not. Is it great, great information that you should know if you are learning the Bible and its importance? Absolutely. I would recommend that you try to read as much of the Apocrypha as you can. Now, don't worry if you need to pause the video. There's just no way I'd be able to read all this to you. But I'm, it's very important, I feel, to show you the amount of information after the book of Revelation. Because that's where part of the value of these Bibles come into play. You know, we know that there's verse-by-verse -verse commentary. But we also know that there are a lot of articles and things after Revelation. Now, here's something that I, I, I have personally enjoyed in the ESV study Bible is the original languages. Uh, Bill Mounts, who has wrote one of the best informations on this, The Basics of Biblical Greek by Bill Mounts or William Mounts. He was on the New Testament chair of the translation of the ESV for 10 years as it was being made. So there's a lot of information about the Greek, uh, not just here. Of course, here's, you know, your Hebrew alphabet, um, you know, very, very helpful. But also throughout the Bible itself, here's your Greek alphabet. Throughout the Bible, lots of Greek and Hebrew references and information that you're going to want to get a hold of. How the New Testament quotes and interprets the Old Testament. In fact, there's a whole book uh, commentary by uh, G.K. Beale. Um, it's called How How the Old Testament Uses Old Testament. And that book itself is about 1,200 pages. It's about $45. And it just goes through the entirety of New Testament use of the Old Testament. There's a great, great article on it right there in your ESV study Bible. The Bible and Christianity. How did we get here? How does Christianity view the Bible, use the Bible? Because you and I can see, and now here's something else. Immanuel Kant, you don't know who that is, and you're a Bible scholar. I don't think you can call yourself a Bible scholar. Reformation, fundamentalism evangelicalism and then we're essentially now in the post-evangelicalism age i don't even know what we're in in 2018 because nobody holds this as the inerrant inspired authoritative word of god anymore that article will help you 
sort things out. How does the Bible compare to world religions? Again, you're witnessing to people, a lot of atheists, a lot of, a lot of uh, moral therapeutic deism out there. It's, a, it's a, uh, an abomination of amalgamations of Hinduism, Judaism, Evangelicalism, Confucianism, Buddhism, Islam. One great big gumbo pot, if you will. We're going to take a little bit of the Quran. We're going to take a little bit of the Bible. We're going to mix it together. We got Chrislam. Going to be very careful when you're talking to people. You got to know where they're coming from before you can just start quoting scripture. Because you can quote scripture until you're blue in the face. If they don't believe it as the word of God, then you are wasting your time. You can be prayed up, fasted up, but if you're not learned in how to correctly witness to somebody, you got to be careful. These articles will help you better witness your faith in Jesus Christ to someone who doesn't have that faith in Jesus Christ. History of Salvation in the Old Testament. One of my favorite articles in this study Bible. Everybody who was saved, anybody who got saved. Made professions of faith or professions of faith in Christ uh, inferenced or the work of God which is Christ in the Old Testament. Look at all this information. History of salvation in the Old Testament. You know how long it would take you to Google all this information? Or actually memorize it for yourself and be able to recall it? That This article right here is worth the purchase price of the Bible. Now, I got to the concordance. We're going to switch over to the Reformation Study Bible. Now, Reformation Study Bible. Now, here's, here's another thing that I like about the Reformation that is not in the ESV Study Bible. They have little essays right in the midst of the Scripture. In this particular case, we have 1 Timothy... Jesus Christ is mediator. In Romans 9, there's one on uh, predestination. Whew. That's a whole Sunday sermon right there. All the notes you could write down in a Sunday sermon right there in Romans 9. Now, what you're going to find here in the Reformation is what makes some of the difference in the purchase price. We have our topical articles, apologetics. You saw similar articles in the ESV study book. And I believe that if you have the quality setting on your YouTube to its highest, which this is being recorded in 4K, if you're able to watch it on a desktop screen, 4K, you'd definitely be able to read it. But if you're watching this on your phone, 1080p, you'll be alright. And I believe, if you have uh, the new iPhone, you can watch this in 1440p. You should be able to read these articles. Pause and read them for yourself. Now, so the article I was talking about, out of the canon of scripture, Robert Godfrey. Covenant theology. Now, you got to remember, Reformation Study Bible, Covenant theology, no dispensational, no uh, <laughs> leaky dispensationalist, as like John MacArthur says he is. A lot of Presbyterians, ultra-reformed, five-point Calvinist wrote the commentary on these types of articles and commentary, which is what you want because they take the interpretation of Scripture, the church antiquity, and the correct interpretation of Scripture, which affirms the inerrancy of Scripture, they take it very, very seriously. Not going to be any stories about somebody from 1970. No. Solid Scripture. Exegetical information, which is what you want. 
Now remember, we looked at the ASV study Bible, interpreting scripture by scripture. It's very similar. New Testament textual criticism. That's where you might find some of that Immanuel Kant, um, Thomas Aquinas, some people that have not held the scripture in as high regard and given it some criticism. Of course, if you didn't know, the Reformation Study Bible, which you're looking at now, was originally published in most of its commentary and form as the New Geneva Study Bible in 1995. The ESV translation was released in 2001. So, who copied who because these are so similar? Who knows? But... R.C. Sproul, Dr. Sproul, and the team of theologians and scholars that worked on this Reformation Study Bible originally printed it in 1995 as the New Geneva Study Bible. So the ESV Study Bible probably borrowed a little bit from, I'm not talking about the actual notes, but the form, you know, the format, the layout in which the Reformation Study Bible is, as you've seen, might have gotten a little bit from it from the New Geneva. Now, of course, they are both so very similar now, you can hardly tell the difference except for the color maps. And right here, this is why I took you through everything after Revelation to get to this point here. Creeds, confessions, and catechisms. In the Reformation Study Bible, you will find Chalcedonian definition of faith. Now, I had to write, I've written, uh, I've written probably three papers on the Chalcedonian councils and the definition of faith. Getting into that, just that article, the summarization of it, is going to be great for your learning as a Bible scholar. The Heidelberg Catechism. If you haven't read that, you need to do it. And I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you understand the Word of God to the best of your ability. And we are in our time now standing on the shoulders of, of giants, ladies and gentlemen, standing on the shoulders of giants, giants who wrote things like the Heidelberg Catechism, giants of the faith, I'm not talking about Stephen Furtick, by the way, I'm talking about giants of the faith who wrote things like the Westminster Confession of Faith, which you're going to see here in just a second. I'm talking about titans, titans, the canons of Dort, all right, the Senoid of Dort, how we come up with the tulip. You're wondering how the tulip came about? It didn't come out from the Senoid of Dort exactly, but what they laid out became the five points of Calvinism, which became one of the greatest tools for explaining in a short amount of time, the doctrines of grace that we have had for quite some time. Trying to explain the doctrines of grace to somebody takes a really long time, several sessions, but you can do it by starting off with the tulip, which came from the Synod of Dort. Now, Westminster Confession of Faith. This alone in print um, sells for about $10, $12. And this, the Reformation Study Bible, has both the shorter and larger Westminster Confessions of Faith. Now, if you're not familiar with the Westminster Confession of Faith, it's way too long to get into, but of marriage and divorce, of the sacraments, of the church, of baptism... What this will help you to understand, this is almost like a course. This is almost like a course in uh, pastoral leadership, if you will. This is almost like a course in biblical apologetics. And this is almost a course in church ethics. You remember those articles we saw on ethics, biblical ethics in the ESV study Bible? A lot of that is going to be covered right here in the Westminster Catechism. 
But there's also the other articles which we looked at, which you're going to want to read. Now, as I'm drawing to a close here of the comparison between these two Bibles, if I were you, I'd be asking me, which one do I get? Just go ahead and give it to me straight, preacher. Tell me, which one do I get? Well, I'll tell you. You want to start. Here's what I would recommend you do. You start by getting yourself a Reformation Study Bible. Okay? And then, very shortly after that, very shortly after that, you get yourself an ESV Study Bible. And then you keep both of them very close. Keep both of them very close. And in fact, what I would do if I were you is I would read both of the notes side by side. If I'm doing a reading of Romans 9, I'd have Romans 9 for the Reformation Study Bible pulled up, and I'd have the ESV Study Bible pulled up. And that's what I would do if I were you. Concordance in the Reformation Study Bible... Not quite as big as the one in the ESV study Bible. Now, The notes in the commentary throughout the scripture are so similar. They're very close. That wouldn't be something that we'd want to sit here and go through. That would take hours. But here's where some of the differences come in. The, the depth and density of things like the articles after Revelation, the concordance. There's a Bible reading plan in the Reformation, and we're going to switch back to the ESV. And we're going to draw this thing to a close. Here's a concordance. I will also note that the paper in the ESV study Bible is slightly less quality than the Reformation, but it's almost impossible to tell unless you are, hmm, I wouldn't say a Bible expert because I'm not one, but doing that right there, you can kind of tell the Reformation paper is slightly more Quality. Now, Smith's own binding on both, if you didn't already know. I think the Reformation binding is, out of all the Bibles I own, the strongest, built like a tank. You can, you can get mad at Stephen Furtick if you want to and throw the Reformation Study Bible in a fit of rage, and don't worry, it'll be all right. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but this concordance in the Crossway ESV Study Bible is crazy. I haven't taken the time to count each and every entry in this concordance, but I wanted to show you, actually I missed a page, Look at this. 
This concordance is excellent, outstanding. And really, the main reason that I recommended the Reformation Study Bible as your first purchase, as opposed to the ESV Study Bible, is I believe that a few of the theological notes in the Reformation Study Bible are slightly more dense, grounded, um, a little more in-depth. However, depending on your doctrinal view of Scripture and your church attendance and those sorts of things, you may want to go with the Study Bible by Crossway, the ESV, first. I'll leave that up to you to decide, but I would get the Reformation first, and then shortly after, maybe a month later, get all to the ESV study Bible. And again, we got to the daily Bible reading plan. This one for the ESV study Bible is way more in depth. This is a great Bible reading plan, a little more in depth. Now, which one, again, do we get? Do we get the ESV study Bible or do we get the Reformation study Bible? Same thickness, same height, same width. I'd get that first and then shortly thereafter, get the ESV study Bible. I know that that was long, but now you know for sure. You can go back and look at it and pause if you need to. Which one you feel is best? Which one you think gets more of your money? This is Caleb Bass. To all of my Bible friends, Reformation Study Bible, ESV Study Bible, the two have been compared, and now you are better informed on which one to get. Get one or both as soon as you can.